Examples. I stole some um, outlines and an opening page from a few people. So I'm going to hand you back your essays at the end of class today, but I'm going to talk about them in class, kind of go through things tomorrow. And so just remind me, and I'll do it at the end of class. So I want to get to the War of 1812, so let's go take your notes out. We're talking about the duel. Good. <laughs> you didn't no, this not good. You showed it to me every time. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, least, did I get a good grade on my essay? I think so. Okay. Is it I can't remember if it was correct. No, I'm not. Huh? Is it about the C? Yeah. Okay. That's it's all I need. It's H. It's H. <laughs> <laughs> Oh yeah. So I'm gonna talk about the essays for ten minutes. It's all recorded, but I'm gonna go through the outline and stuff. But I I've been photocopied, I just had to And oh, so let's go ahead. Where are we finishing it? Did we get through the duel? Did we finish the duel? Um, he, said it's, he said it's not a federal crime for the vice president to kill anyone. <laughs> so, yeah, I wasn't a This is actually one of the weirdest things. When John Kennedy was assassinated, it still was not a federal crime in Dallas. I still can't get over that it wasn't a federal crime to kill the president until 1964. What a weird way. Did they just like never think of that? Or? Well, or were they just like, who cares? How many presidents have been assassinated up to that point? Well, there have been three, you know, so that's a lot. <laughs> it, just, it, went, it just took Kennedy for them to be like, no, this is well, No, the big thing was the jurisdiction. Um, the After Kennedy was assassinated, they thought this might be part of a plot to start World War III, and they wanted to get out of um, out of Dallas and get the new president up in the air as quick as possible. So they wanted to get the body. They thought we're going to get the body to D.C. with gold. And that actually violated the law. It was chaos, absolute chaos, for so many reasons. And in fact, in special topics, we do a we do a unit on that on the Kennedy assassination. Pretty interesting stuff. Do we got the, the, the day? Yes. Yes. This was oh the test. So I have good news and maybe good news. The test is going to be on teams, and I want uh, it's going to be fast. It's going to be you have 25 minutes. So on Friday, bring your computer or laptop or something like that, and you do it on teams. No, it's all multiple choice. That is it. You can use anything you write down, but you only have 25 minutes. So if you're sitting there flipping through your notes, the clock is running. It'll be in class. That's my plan. So everyone, please bring your laptop for the first 25 minutes on Friday. I gave you the review list last week on the Federalist era. I also put a copy on Teams if you can't find them. So look on the Teams post for today. And I'll do it for the rest of the week. And was that your question? Yeah, I was going to say chapter 12 will not be on the book on the desk. Sound good? And the reason we're not doing the writing, we did a full essay. So I figured that's good. All right, so we got Burr Hamilton, uh, Burr, Burr 
took off, and then later Guam would get involved with a plot to uh, break away Louisiana and form his own country, or maybe join Spain. Burr was quite the scoundrel, and part of it was he was probably already a little bit of a scoundrel, but once you uh, um, commit murder, then run away, and you're the sitting vice president, it becomes easier to do more things that might be considered scoundrelly. Is that a word? If it is, then it should be, right? And so Lewis and Clark, they went west. First off, who did they, um, or why did Napoleon sell the land? Where was the slave rebellion at? And what was Jefferson's point of view on that slave rebellion and the new country of Haiti? Because of fear of? Yeah, that constant overriding fear. And there are two constitutional questions. One was, does the Constitution, or is it constitutional to buy land? What was the most controversial constitutional issue at that time? Someone said what? Yeah, would they become states? Would they be equal? Yeah. And what would turn out? What would happen? Would, they, would the Constitution follow the flag here? Yeah, for the most part. <laughs> yeah. And it would, every place the U.S. would conquer, all the way to here. Then it would end. Then the U.S. started conquering other areas in the Constitution that did not necessarily follow the flag. They would become more of an empire. But that's coming down the road, the Spanish-American War in 1898. Are you ready for the Spanish-American War? Arm deaths for booster shot. I'm really glad I got it. But uh, just right here, a big line of pain. I can take it. You have no idea how tough I am. Huh? Okay, let's get let's, let's we'll watch the commercial in a sec. So we got this. So Jefferson would win in 1804 for re-election, pretty overwhelmingly. You notice that there's basically the Federalist Party. It's kind of here. And that, but they didn't even vote for him. Jefferson was really popular. The combination of the Louisiana Purchase, the economy was doing well. The country didn't radically change. So a lot of Federalists were like, ah, hey, it's kind of the same. In fact, the Federalist Party basically died here. There's no Federalist Party. And they did pass the 12th Amendment, which said that electors would vote for the president and vice president instead of two votes. Remember how they had before? Now, that solved the immediate a constitutional problem of having the vice president be the, op the leader of the opposing party. But this basically codified the Electoral College. It made it really hard to get rid of. And so if anybody wanted to get rid of the Electoral College and make it more small d democratic, to have the people having a greater voice in choosing the president, that kind of went away here. And and don't forget, Madison actually thought the Electoral College would just kind of die and all the elections would be decided in the House. Decided in the house. That didn't happen either. So, also in 1808, the Slave Trade Compromise, which allowed for the federal government to regulate commerce, this year reminds some of you from your essay, but it said they would not touch the slave trade for 20 years. In 1808, Jefferson signed the bill saying the United States would no longer participate in the transatlantic slave trade. Now, there's still interstate trade, uh, um, slave trade between the states, and they could still ship slaves over the Atlantic. They just could not um, ship people who were free and, they, and Howard they became a slave, kidnapped into slavery, which, of course, is a very fine line. That's easy to break. But Jefferson's thought was, you get rid of the slave trade, and eventually slavery would go away. Here's a picture from an anti-slavery journal showing slaves and how they're tightly packed in. We'll talk a little bit more about this in a few weeks. So, even though this we passed through the end of Jefferson's term, this whole time would be dominated by war. That commercial war, sometimes it's also called the Napoleonic War, but that Anglo-French War was going on still. And basically there's stalemate. The Royal Navy controlled the sea. This is a painting of the Battle of Austerlitz, which happened off the core, the coast of Spain. 
where the French fleet was destroyed by the British fleet. And on land, Napoleon, and there's Napoleon right there, his army swept Europe clean for the most part. That's called, that, that's the Battle of Austerlitz. And so Napoleon controlled much of Europe, but because of Britain's powerful navy, Britain stayed in the fight. So it devolved into a war to try to weaken their enemies. A weird kind of stalemate. So don't worry about the writing the Continental System. Just write the Berlin and Milan decrees. I've got to change this. Just a sec. Did I change this? Okay, I didn't. But the Berlin and Milan decrees were done by France. And basically what it said is, we're not going to have any trade with Britain. And since... Napoleon controlled almost all of Europe by then. That said, no trade with Britain. The problem was, and this is what I thought I typed in, but clearly I didn't. It also said, nobody who trades with Britain, we're going to let trade with Europe. Who trades with Britain? The United States. And so this, in a way, isolated all of Europe from U.S. trade. It didn't work. But this should also show you the extent of Napoleon's empire. In what country today is Milan in? Yeah, it's right here. Even though at that time, France annexed it. But Milan. My nephew's in Milan right now. He's seven. Good story? His mom's in town. And... What country is Berlin in today? Germany. Then it was the capital of Prussia, but it showed the areas that France had conquered. Britain responded with a blockade. And what did they call this blockade? The Orders in Council. Don't read too much into it. That's just a, a jargony name basically saying that uh, Parliament ordered a blockade. It, it's just their name for a law at that time. And there is a British cruiser on awful blockade. That duty in the Royal Navy was awful. They might be on board those ships for a year at a time and never get off. Discipline was harsh for the most minor offense. Remember the cat of nine tails? I told you about that. That whipped. For the most minor offense, or they'd be yard armed. You may know what a, be, being yard armed is. I want a good guess. <laughs> so the yard arm, here's the mast, and that's the yard arm right there. So they would hang um, men from their, by their thumb in the yard. Off. Yeah, I can't even wrap my mind how, how awful that would be. So think about a 25-year hitch with that kind of discipline. Horrific food. Okay, it's only horrific if you don't like rock-hard crackers with weevils. That's my favorite part of protein, right? With the added benefit of scurvy. So it's a nightmare. I mean, British sailors would desert all the time. And so when they would stop merchant ships, especially owned by American merchants, going into France, and they would look for cargo that might help the French war effort. By the way, what cargo would help the French war effort? Wouldn't it be pretty much anything? So they just would stop all ships. And they would confiscate the cargo and confiscate the crew. And on that scary note, I think we need something fun. So let's look at Crinkles the Clown. This was a commercial to sell cereal. I want you to ponder this commercial and tell me how creepy this is. By the way, huh? 
It bros me. Does anyone see the connection to impressment? Right? It's so obvious. Okay, I thought the clown was creepy, so I put it up there. Thanks. By the way, why are clowns scary? Maybe not quite. We don't know how many. But he, actually, that one, he didn't, he didn't, the clown was actually, he didn't dress as a clown to murder. I know, but he was a clown. But, look at clowns. Really? You know why clowns are so awful? Because they put on the makeup because they're in circus and they would be like 50 or 60 feet away from the audience so people want to see the expression. So they just kind of look, yeah, do a lot of makeup. Fine. But when they're close up, they look terrifying, correct? Is that fair to say? And yes, John Wayne Gacy was bad. Yes, yeah, so there was a big crowd, a killer clown scare in the 80s and came back in the 2000s. And see, special topics for Halloween, we're trying to decide if we're going to do. The clown panic, the stranger danger panic, or the satanic panic. All of these from the 1980s. Good times in the 80s. We have our own unbelievable panics today, so don't worry. I think we got a beat. So, back to impressment. What was impressment? Literally, they would stake these ships and confiscate the screw and then line up the, confiscate the cargo and then line up the crew and look for deserters. Because the thought was they were deserting the Royal Navy and joining U.S. merchant ships to get away from that awful life. Now, there might have been deserters, but how do you tell somebody is a deserter? Don't they look like every other sailor? What's that? M was for manslaughter. But if they deserted, they wouldn't have that. Good point. <laughs> They would just line them up and pick the 10 fittest sailors and say, you guys are deserters. Bang them over the head, and they're in the Navy. Which, by the way, you can imagine they would desert, too, the first chance they would get. That's part of the reason those ships would never dock. And no one could swim out then. So, they're kidnapping sailors. So it's really hard for U.S. merchants to get sailors for obvious reasons. And this is really hurting U.S. ships combined with the orders of Ca or the uh, the Berlin and Milan decrees. So, I should tell you one thing. Where does the word impressment come from? A recruiting tool that the Royal Navy and the British Army would use called press games, where they would roam around London and recruit people into the Royal Navy or the British Army. You like the recruitment? Do you see the recruiting method? Bang, and you wake up in the Royal Navy. Or here is literally somebody who was accused of taking the king's money, called taking the king's shilling, and they're ripping him out of their home, and they're now in the Navy. And that is how it happened. They didn't have conscription, but they roamed poor neighborhood. By the way, I really like this picture, because it's supposed to be from around 1700, but this is across the Thames from the Tower of London. So this is like in the most... The roughest uh, part of London, with the most crime, kind of a, the most degenerate area. And that's, of course, where Shakespeare put the Globe Theater, because all the plays are just degenerate, and they, that's who they appeal to. Which, of course, makes me laugh when you consider the popular opinion of Shakespeare today, which I have. So, it was called taking the king's shilling. If you took the king's money, a shilling is a gold coin, if you took it, you're in for 25 years. And so this is how they would recruit. They would also go into taverns and recruit in a tavern. Now, this is the British Army. So here are two British soldiers, and they're recruiting this fine young man. And they would find ways to make him more pliable, a.k.a. feed him a lot of alcohol, and also maybe hire a young woman to um, distract him. And then they would get in and take the king's shilling. How would they do it? And they're not going to say, here's the coin, oh, and now you're in. By the way, he is the, uh, the recruitment officer back here. They would say, would you like another drink? Maybe a mug of uh, beer. They turn around, get it. Drop the coin in. <laughs> here. 
here. And as soon as you take it, you're in for 25 minutes. Do you see why they wanted to desert so badly? And then what was his job back here? As soon as he took it, bang. And you wake up and you're in for 25 minutes. Have you ever seen an older mug or in an old style, and it might be ceramic or pewter, don't drink out of pewter? You know why? You ever see pewter mug? It used to be very popular, they're made out of lead. Lead, bad, you're crazy. And very violent. Lead makes you very, very, very violent. And don't forget, my generation sucked up about 10 to 20 times more lead than you. Don't forget that. Don't cross me. But that was on film. I'm your friend. No. So you have these mugs, might be ceramic mug or lead. And you ever notice sometimes you might have a glass bottom? That became a style when people get their older style mugs. And I know people collect them. Why do they have the glass bottom? Pick up the mug to see if there's a coin in it. That's where that comes from. So, there's my one story. Let's get back to the war. So, they're taking this. Jefferson was pushed more and more to do something like Adams felt he must do against the French back in 18, uh, 1798. And so, Jefferson, he makes the decision hey, we'll trade with nobody. He'll call the Embargo Act. The Republicans passed this in Congress with Jefferson's signature. He wanted this. And the Embargo Act said, we will trade with nobody. We will do no trade. We will embargo trade. Thinking that Britain and France, especially Britain, will want American tobacco was the biggie. So much that they'll end the orders in council. Does everyone got that? That's the Embargo Act. Now, what, what is this going to do to American farmers? Oh, it's really going to hurt them, including farmers like, let me throw a name out, Jefferson. But Jefferson knew the U.S. should not get into this war. We have no Navy. We didn't do well against the Barbary Pirates. We're not, we, don't, we can't do it. But there is an exception. Some people can trade if, so there's no trade, if. They get a license. And so everyone write down a license. And there's Jefferson giving out a license. Some could trade. So here's Jefferson, and these people are lined up to get the license. Now, what kind of people are going to get the license? This might be, might be rich, might be wealthy, might be... Who? Some. Some will, some won't. What part is Jefferson? Who's going to get the licenses? Supporters of Jefferson. People who don't criticize Jefferson. If you criticize the embargo, you don't get a license. Wait a minute. Doesn't this sound kind of like something that happened about a decade earlier? Who banned free speech, criticism of the government? What was the law? Alien and Sedition. Sedition Act. And who complained bitterly about that? Jefferson. And now what is he doing? Not only are they upset, look at this. Look at the dog is even upset. But we can read what the dog says. He says, bow wow. Who's that? Claus. Who? That's Napoleon. The embargo. Because most of the trades with Britain helps France. And so here's Napoleon whispering in Jefferson's ear, and it's hard to read for you guys, but it says, you shall be king. By the way, Napoleon was not short, but the British always drew him as short as propaganda. He was not overly tall, he was average for that time. Mm -hmm. So, would you like to use it for trade with France? No. no. But most of our trade was with France. Most of US trade was with France. And so, if we don't trade with anybody, it's kind of helping the French. Okay. 
It's most heartbreaking. Because Britain's, yeah. Because we're benef uh, Britain's benefiting from our trash. And look at the poor dog. So, any criticism would be attacked, but here's the thing most people don't know. To enforce the blockade, the United States employed giant snapping turtles called the grabbies that would roam the shore, and then anybody would try to trade, they would be grabbed. And you, what happens if you snapping turtle grab you? It won't let go, even if you cut the head off, it grips harder. So, here's the snapping turtle, and this cartoon's about it. It's a, there's a license. See the license? Now, it's hard to read, but it's a super fun. That's whiskey. And trying to trade it to see the Union Jack, a British ship. And so, didn't it? How he nicks him. Oh, this cursed old grab me. You see it? See? The American snapping turtle, the old grab me. You see it? It's embargo backwards. If they would be in trouble for, there weren't giant snapping turtles. Let me rephrase that. Giant snapping turtles have no loyalty. So, what did this do to the American economy? Yeah, this really led to, okay, still pre-capitalism, but an economic depression. Jefferson is gonna be blamed for this. And even though it, it's pretty clear he kind of wanted to be president again and run for a third term, he couldn't. But so in 1808, his Secretary of State, the father of the Constitution, James Madison, would be elected president. So another Republican. Now remember what I told you. They would put Democratic Republican, and that's what historians have done it to differentiate this from future Republicans and Democrats. But they called themselves Republicans. And the Federalists, just basically here and a couple spots here and there. But remember, there's no popular vote, only the Electoral College. So Madison is now president. And the first thing he did, he got rid of the Embargo Act. That is what we call a gruesome cartoon from 1809. He cut the head off of the O'Gravney. The problem is, the O'Gravney still has hold. Meaning the problem still exists. Poor turtles. So, the Madison administration, a couple that was dominated by the war, by the way, that's Madison. I don't know why I put uh, him to flash up. His wife, Dolly Madison, had great impact. She was, she was brilliant. But this was at a time where um, where women only could influence men on the side. A little bit like, do you remember Abigail Adams? The same uh, thing. And women are almost on the cusp of losing even more power because of the Industrial Revolution. And so this idea, once again, I always got to emphasize this. There's not this constant progression of more rights for people. It can backslide. There can be a lot of two steps forward and one step back. Or sometimes two steps forward and three steps back. And so, be dominated by this commercial war. There's so many paintings of Napoleon. Here's him crossing the Alps during the Italian campaign in, in 1800 by the great artist David. So they replaced the Embargo Act with the Non-Intercourse Act. And the Non-Intercourse Act, intercourse in this context means trade. And what it said is the United States Will, no, will not trade, no trade with, with, did you see how I did that? Belligerence. What's a belligerent? Anyone know what a belligerent is? Somebody at war. So if you did not know that, write down. So somebody at war, somebody fighting. And who are the two big belligerents to the American point of view? France and Britain. 
Who do the United States want to? Who does the United States want to trade with? Britain and France. So basically, this bill is no different than the embargo. Line. It's a failure, an absolute failure, and this happens a lot. Republicans who passed this bill wanted to save face, so they didn't want to totally go away from the embargo line. So next they did everyone's uh, favorite Macon's bill number two. Nobody likes Macon's bill number one. He was a congressman from Georgia. But in 1810, they'll say, okay, whichever country respects, oops, I didn't write that down. So um, write this down, respects neutrality rights. Whichever country respects neutrality rights. And what was neutrality rights? Get rid of the orders of council or stop the pot, or stop the uh, Berlin and Milan decrees. But the one we cared the most about was the orders of council. France responded almost immediately. Okay, almost immediately at that time was about seven months later with the Cador letter. And the Cador letter said the, Fr the French would consider getting rid of the Berlin and Milan decrees. Is everyone good with that? They'd consider it. They'd consider it. Did they mean it? No. But what did the U.S. do? They jumped at it. And they said, we'll trade with France. But if we'll trade with France, that means we're embargoing, embargoing whom? Britain. And if Britain and France, if Britain and France are at a war, and we pick to trade with France, what have we just done? We've joined the side in the war. This is going to directly lead to the War of 1812. And this is the definition of a, of a diplomatic war. Yes? Um, so, is there any kind of But they were wrong. And so we, we, we embargo first. We won't, we're not going to try. Embargo means not trade. By the way, if you're not sure about embargo, make sure you go back to embargo. I can write down that means we will not trade. And so on that happy note, I'm going to hand back the test. And by the way, if I put EX, that means explanation. GD, good. A check mark is good. W is weak. Weak. A lot of people miss the context. Now, there's a few things here and there, but there are a lot of, oh, I don't care what you guys say. This is third period. If I put down CB to CB, there's a, a, there's a mistake. We can uh, figure it out. Yeah. Evidence skipping. I put also a score on that little rubric, but that doesn't necessarily correspond. I don't, I don't really like using rubrics, but I'm trying to guess what they might give you on the AP exam. Because oh. the, the rubric doesn't necessarily apply, because I'll look for different pages in the AFP. Sorry, I'm passing the drop. Oh, that's so good. Cool. If you got below an 85, I'll give you a chance to read your parts of the job. I'm getting there. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Got the search for the name. Is that nice? Yes. Yeah, that's nice. That's nice. I mean, I can't read it. Sorry about that. If the name was on the front, I would search for it. 
What does any of this say? More a lot of them, a lot of more more fish and more You wrote about the compromise. You never explained why you need compromise. You know what I mean? Yeah. See, explain on the attack of it. And so that's why. Really, I mean, just on the That's the only thing. That's the only thing. And so one more, you know what it would have required? One more sentence in each other. So, when would be a good time to talk to you about this? Yeah, we can do it like uh, either today or tomorrow. Let's do it tomorrow. Okay. So I'm going to go through a little more detail. This is the same. Hey guys, everyone yeah, says you like actually have an arm, so okay. You're going to do an institution in that case. Yeah, yeah. You wrote about it. And so we got to get to the, you didn't talk about it, right? Yeah, yeah. Some people say it's hard to Seventeen ninety two. You did the federal chair. Oh, thank you, thank you. You wrote about the Constitution, and you're supposed to write about the disagreements between the parties, and that's what you got. So you got some things mixed up there. Okay, I guess. And that one, we just got to get that sorted. Okay. And as soon as it's not that big, the first ask is going to be easy. Okay. Sound good? Thank you. So come that much. Yeah. <laughs> now I see what we did. I just barely remember everything together. It's gonna hurt me. Oh, did you see that? No. Okay.
Are there any questions? Questions? I'm here to answer. My 45 year old Frisbee. Watch out for that foot. Were you, that was your plan, wasn't it? Yeah, totally. And then the tram, that was something lost people. Yeah, it's like the, to transcend this world and go. The transcendentalist. To get away from the empirical world of science and technology as a reaction to the new economic system. These are all reactions to the new economic system. Every single one on here. Any other questions? Anything else? Anything else? Okay. You want the quiz? No. You just want me to give you a grade? Yes. Okay, we hollow. No formal training. All right, let's do it. Okay, so just put it, just put a dot next to the ones you use. Still talking. We're going to Italy. 